Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. There was a critic screening for a few Marvel What If episodes recently, and during that, they showed teasers for three upcoming Marvel animated series, including X-Men 97 episodes, a Black Panther TV series they've been making on the stealth called Eyes of Wakanda, and the Spider-Man Freshman Year series. They revealed a bunch about what's going on with all those other series, so I'll break it all down. This video will mostly be with the X-Men 97 teaser, but I will explain the other series during the video, too. If you're brand new to the channel, of course I'll be doing videos for everything. The next big episodes will be for the What If Season 2 episodes. That'll start next week. There'll be nine total. I've already done a big trailer video for that, so I'll link it at the end of this. But they finally confirmed that the X-Men 97 episodes will release in the spring next year after the Echo episodes and that Spider-Man Madam Web movie, even though that's sort of like a Sony Marvel movie and Marvel MCU stuff isn't totally involved with it, at least as far as we know. It definitely seems like Sony wants to connect what's going on in their Venom universe with the MCU, and Madam Web is generally a multiverse character. But X-Men 97 coming in the spring, quote-unquote, they didn't give an exact date, basically means between March and April. And in the past, Disney has really liked releasing stuff in March, so I'm expecting March for right now. But basically, the series is meant to be X-Men the Animated Series Season 6. They're just calling it Season 1 of X-Men 97. The reason why they used 97 is because had they not canceled X-Men the Animated Series after Season 5, Season 6 would have aired in 1997. But in the footage that they showed off recently from Episode 1, the X-Men are interrogating Bolivar Trask with Jean Grey using her telepathy to probe his mind for the truth. They use the Trask character during the live-action X-Men Days of Future Past movie, played by Peter Dinklage. His backstory was pretty similar during that as it was to the animated series and in the comics. He's meant to be the scientist that originally created the Sentinels. During the new footage from Episode 1, the new X-Men team, mostly made up of members from the original team with a couple minor changes, it's the leadership that changed. They head out on a mission to confront the threat of new Sentinels, now like brand new ones, so that's why they're interrogating Trask again, because he created the original ones. They try to find out who's behind it, and while they're on the mission, they make a bunch of references to their training in the Danger Room, so it sounds like there's a lot of Danger Room in those early episodes. Professor X is supposed to return eventually, but Episode 1 is mostly the new team working together without him. Like, what is life like with the X-Men without Professor X? They're basically picking up where the original series left off, and at the end of those original episodes in the finale, Professor X almost died after he was hit with an energy disruptor at a mutant relations summit. Lalandra comes to take him to the Shi'ar Empire where they have technology to heal him, and that's basically how they go out in the original finale, like the X-Men and Magneto watch him leave. In their absence, Magneto tries to carry on his good name, redeem himself in the process, helping the X-Men standing in for Professor X as their new leader. Storm and Cyclops are basically meant to be like the day-to-day -day team leaders, even though Magneto is technically in charge of everything. Jean Grey starts the season being pregnant. I believe it's supposed to be with Cable, a.k.a. Nathan Summers. It sounds like she'll give birth to him at some point during season one. I don't think they want to begin season two with her still being pregnant. In the comics, he's meant to be the son of Cyclops and Madeline Pryor, so a little bit of a different twist, who was a clone of Jean Grey, who they thought had died, created by Mr. Sinister, who was obsessed with Cyclops and Jean Grey's bloodline. He believed that the children born of Cyclops and Jean Grey would become ultra-powerful Omega-level mutants that he wanted for himself, so he was obsessed with them during the original X-Men the animated series. It sounds like they're continuing that during X-Men 97. There'll probably be some Easter eggs for the original comic book storyline, but like they did a big Cable storyline during the original X-Men the Animated Series as part of Apocalypse's storyline, like he was time traveling to try and kill Apocalypse. They also did a big Age of Apocalypse storyline during the original series. So don't be surprised if we're seeing like the young Cable be born during these new episodes if we also see the older Cable return at some point too. Part of the reason why I think that storyline is taking more center stage is because Mr. Sinister himself is supposed to be the main villain of season one at least. It sounds like there'll be some larger plot that he's involved in, like his plans will have gotten bigger since the original series, but it usually just comes back around to genetic experimentation. During the new trailer footage, Cyclops also gets that classic Professor X line, which is also a comic book line too, to me, my X-Men. Generally, that's about all the footage that they've revealed so far. The new team mostly supposed to be the same with a few minor changes, like this is the roster here. This new character is just a redesign of Morph. He's back on the main team. Remember, they found out that he was still alive, and then eventually he turned good again. A lot of people confused about this character too. This is just meant to be Sunspot. 
the original writers explained what would have happened had they continued the regular show back in the day and they had gotten season six. And it sounds like the plot of X-Men 97 is basically that. Like they just literally continued with what happens to the X-Men a couple months after Professor X leaves the Earth. There have already been a couple big X-Men the animated series Easter eggs in the live action Marvel movies and Disney Plus series recently. The biggest ones being Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. When they introduced Patrick Stewart in the 838 universe as part of the Illuminati, his character design was meant to look exactly like Professor X from the animated series. They even played the song from the animated series. Our final member. Generally, all the X-Men characters in the 838 universe, not just the one that you see here, are meant to be based on X-Men, the animated series versions of the characters. And speaking of X-Men, I obviously just did a big video for the Deadpool 3 Wolverine scenes with the classic X-Men that came back from the first X-Men movie. Like, there are a bunch of deep cuts from the X-Men movies in that movie. We'll also see a bunch of them come back during Secret Wars. I think just depending on how Deadpool 3 does, they're waiting to see. It's sort of like a Spider-Man No Way Home for the X-Men movies. X-Men No Way Home. And if it does well, they'll bring more of them back during Secret Wars. And if it doesn't do well, then there'll just be a couple of them like Hugh Jackman's Wolverine coming back. During the Miss Marvel series, you may have heard when they were revealing that she was also a mutant, they also played the X-Men the animated series theme music. There's something different in your genes like a mutation. And speaking of Miss Marvel, we literally just saw the Marvel's movie post credit scene where Monica Rambeau wound up in the alternate X-Men universe with this version of Kelsey Grammer's Beast from the original X-Men movies. So Kevin Feige clearly wants people thinking of X-Men in the original series. For those of you asking whether or not it's going to be canon to the MCU, though, generally you're supposed to look at it the way we look at What If being canon to the MCU. Like, technically it is canon, but it's all happening in different universes. So X-Men the animated series is canon, but it's just happening in an alternate universe. They'll probably release, like, the full larger trailer after the Echo episodes premiere in January. So look out for that. Of course, I'll do a video for whatever they wind up releasing. And thankfully, they did confirm that they're already recording, like they're working on X-Men 97 Season 2. That probably will release sometime during 2025. Hopefully, it doesn't get pushed to like 2026. Don't want to wait too long before we actually see that. They also confirmed that they're working on What If Season 3 right now. That will release sometime during 2025. Hopefully, because we have all these X-Men Fantastic Four characters coming in, they'll put some of them in the What If episodes and fully take advantage of the whole concept of the What If series. The other big 2024 Marvel animated series they released teasers for were the Black Panther Eyes of Wakanda series, which is like a stealth series they've been working on in the background, apparently. The official synopsis they released is, Throughout Wakandan history, brave warriors have been tasked to travel the world retrieving dangerous vibranium artifacts. This is their story. That makes it sound like it'll be about a special group inside the Dora Milaje or another group of special warriors who go around the world just hunting down vibranium weapons and artifacts that have fallen into the hands of villains over the years, like that ancient vibranium weapon that Killmonger found in the museum during the first Black Panther movie. Stuff like that, but across the ages. So we'll see many different versions of Black Panther from across the years. My assumption right now, because that's like the next series after X-Men 97, is that that will release summer 2024. They also confirmed that the Spider-Man Freshman Year series will premiere in 2024, so by default, that basically means it'll air at the end of 2024. They also changed the official title of that, and now it's called Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. I'm not sure why they did that, maybe to avoid a little bit of confusion because of the way the continuity is going to work, because there's some of it that's canon to the MCU, like it's meant to be Tom Holland's Spider-Man's freshman year, but a lot of the details of the series are different, a lot of the events of his backstory are different too. A really good example is that Norman Osborn and Harry Osborn are a big part of his story during that. And for example, this is the Captain America Civil War scene that we saw in theaters, but it's Norman Osborn instead of Tony Stark, Iron Man. Nico Minoru, who you probably remember from Runaways, is a big part of that. Doctor Strange is a big part of it too. Benedict Cumberbatch, I think, is supposed to be doing the voice. And Charlie Cox is coming back as his version of Daredevil during it. They even animated the series in the style of Steve Ditko's classic Spider-Man art, so it looks really cool, too. I've already done a much longer trailer video for that Spider-Man freshman year series, so I'll link it at the end of this, but it looks like it's going to be pretty solid. And because they revealed their full 2024 animated slate, that essentially means that the Marvel Zombies Season 1 is pushed to 2025. Like I said, I'm also assuming that X-Men 97 Season 2 will also be 2025, as is What If Season 3. 
But everyone post all your reactions in the comments below to all this new footage and let me know which other animated series do you want them to do. The sky is literally the limit. They can do anything that they want in animation. No worries about the budget. Really hoping to see more Fantastic Four, more X-Men animated stuff happening in the next couple of years now that they're rolling all that stuff out in live action. There'll probably be a couple more What If Season 2 trailer videos, so I'll post those as soon as they release them. And click here for that Spider-Man Freshman Year trailer video. And click here for my other What If Season 2 trailer video and Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.